Good day guys, Drew here. Uh, I've got a lot of new subscribers, so although this video is about the dam, I'll do a quick introduction of myself, and uh, next time Steph's on camera, I'll get her to do one of her. But yeah, my name is Drew. Uh, we live on 10 acres in the Lockyer Valley. Uh, our small farm, our goal is to be self-sufficient. We currently produce I reckon close to 90% of all the meat we consume. Uh, chicken is the only thing we don't do at the moment because it's just too much effort for such a little reward. Um, although we have done it in the past, we've done chicken and quail for meat. Uh, we have a freezer full of lamb and beef and some pork. Um, we also had a pretty thriving veggie garden this season. And this cooler season, we don't really have winter up here. Uh, this cooler season for us will definitely uh, hopefully not definitely will hopefully produce a lot more of the vegetables we need uh we've currently got tomatoes pumpkins sweet potatoes all on the go we have a heap of stuff there to put in the ground soon once this uh once the soil dries up a bit uh as you can see we've had a little bit of rain um yeah so once the soil dries up we'll get back into the garden and mix in the rest of the chook shit five years ago it always had water in it up until very very recently um, like September last year um, it was that dryest we could you could literally walk across the whole thing it was full of silt and we made the decision to get a guy out to dig it out uh, he came out in a 15 and a half ton machine um, a Cabelco 15 and a half ton he had it floated in he came in in the early afternoon say two or three o'clock and he worked through till six o'clock on maybe maybe two nights maybe three nights I can't remember exactly it was a while ago now um, and it cost us just over a thousand dollars I think it was nine eleven hundred or ten ninety something like that um, and for context our dam is 35 meters by 55 meters uh, our dam wall extends beyond that, but the actual bit that holds water, that's that's roughly the size of it. it uh, it's increased a lot more in the last couple of days than it was previously, which I'm pretty happy about. I know a lot of people are still suffering with the with the floods, but here in the Lockyer Valley, we've been in drought for so long, we're, we're just happy for anything. Um, yeah, so let's go back and look at the Cabelco digging it out. Uh, also, I should note... Um, it was it was full of mud and silt um, and clay and pretty much everything that's on the north side of the paddock just washed into it over a over a 30 year period so 40 year period actually we're told it was dug in the 70s so I can't do math that could be 50 years um, yeah yeah It's a little easier than my kanga. <laughs> Even if he stacks it all up there, we push it down with a kanga. Well, you can push it down with a kanga. I've had people tell me that a thousand, or what we paid was too much, and some people tell me that it was really cheap. So I don't know which way to go, but uh, he was literally the only bot that could do it at the time. That's why we took the took the quote, uh, didn't even get a quote off anybody else because they couldn't get out here in time. And luckily for us, a week after we got it dug, we had a downpour and we actually had some water in our dam for the first time in almost eight or nine months. Um, and the neighbors tell me that our dam has never been dry in the whole time they've been here. 
So yeah, we'll uh, take a look back on all that. So this is directly after, so almost three days after we had it cleaned out. This is eight days after we had it cleaned out, and this is a couple days after that. So probably 10 or 12 days. Um, and then we had a huge downpour, as you can see here. Uh, this is just down the road from us. And then this happened, which probably doesn't look like much, but this happened. So that's my arm at full extension and me underwater. Uh, this is before the rains. Uh, this is me introducing the fish that I'm going to talk about in a second. There they are there. Cute little guys. Only about uh, four and a half, five and a half centimeters long. So yeah, enjoy. Now. All right, so we recently stocked our dam with some bass, some yellow bellies, some silver birch. Um, we're not sure if there's enough life in there to really keep them going strong so we spoke to a couple of people and we decided to put a bale of hay in the, there. Uh, also what we learnt was that if you put a bale of beardless barley as it breaks down it creates acid which binds to the clay particles that are suspended in the water and pulls it down and makes your make, like reduces the turbidity and how muddy your dam is. So this is day one and we'll check back on day 30 and see what it looks like. Are you supposed to break it up first? Nope. Yeah, there's a full bale which allows insects and stuff to get in there and hide behind. They should fill with water over the next few hours and soak down. And sink hopefully somewhere in the middle of the dam. Creating a habitat for microorganisms. And then start breaking down and binding with the clay particles. Alright, so in the video where you've seen me put the fish in, that was before the rain, uh, about three or four days before the rain. And you've seen how turbid it was, how much, uh, how many, how muddy it was, basically. Um, so that bale of hay has definitely had an improvement. Um, as has the entire area. Um, so Steph got a drone, and she's pretty good at driving it, and it takes pretty good videos, too. So we're playing around here. You can see how much this rain has impacted the entire area. Um... Before this Atkinson's Dam, which is what you can maybe see in the background now, just behind that, underneath that big, beautiful, white, fluffy cloud, that was at uh, less than 1%. It's currently only at 3.2%, I believe. Um, it was two small puddles that uh, had cows running through it. I believe now it's three quite large puddles. Uh, still nowhere near where it was at capacity, where... I believe they held the state titles for jet skiing or water skiing, perhaps. Not really into it, but I believe they did do that. How good's that cloud? This is either Five Mile or Seven Mile Lagoon, because I always forget the bloody name of it. Um, either way, it's the first time that's had water in it in about four years as well. Um, swans are down there breeding. We took the drone down there yesterday and got some footage of that on sunset. We didn't want to get too close to upset the birds, but yeah. So you can definitely see the impact in the area. There's water aground again. We're at our suburb is called Lockyer Waters, and it finally actually looks like it. It's pretty nice. <laughs> 